Hi guys, Orlando Morgado here. I'm going to show you guys how to make a simple box out of some basic tools. Uh, these are tools that you guys have received in your packages of supplies for your class. So let's go ahead and get started. So our goal is to make a box out of plywood. So it's gonna be a hollow box. And everybody received some pieces of plywood, small scraps, maybe five or six inches or so. So the box we're gonna end up with is gonna be pretty small. Now, constructing a box, there's a bunch of different approaches to doing it. One of the simplest ways to do it is to use what's called a pinwheel pattern, where you have one base that's one size and four walls that are a little bit smaller than the base, but all the same size. So the idea is that we're talking about an open box and we're talking about a box that the four walls sit on the base. And our ultimate goal is to have the box be the same measurable dimension from any of the angles. So we're dealing with a piece of plywood that is one quarter inch thick, and that means that if you were trying to make a box that was overall two inches tall, you're going to need your walls that are gonna sit on top of the base piece to be one and three quarters inches. So here's a visual aid before we get started just to help everybody get an idea of what we're gonna be doing. So it's called the pinwheel pattern because of the way that the four sides intersect and the base is oversized from the four sides just a little bit. So anybody who's particularly good at math will be figuring this out quite handily. And for reference, I put some numbers on this. This is just based on the size of the scraps of plywood that I'm working with. So the miter box is gonna definitely come in handy here, but not yet because right now those pieces are a little too big to fit in there. So we have two options. One way is to try to freehand the cuts until you can get it to fit and cut to size. The other way is to just cut some excess off of the plywood. So based on what I'm trying to do here, where I'm trying to get four pieces that are two and a quarter by two and a quarter, and one piece that's two and a half by two and a half, it might actually just make sense to do the cuts to do at least one cut through first at the right size so I can then fit it in the miter box. Because if I were to just cut this so it fit in the miter box, cut it down to about four inches, then this piece is gonna turn up being a little too narrow to get enough pieces out of it. Another option would be to shrink the dimensions you're working in. And instead of going for a box that's two and a half by two and a half by two and a half, if your goal is to get a box that's, you know, one and three quarters or two inch by two inch, then you might be able to get away with just cutting the plywood down to four inches first and then doing all the cuts in the miter box. But that is up to you guys. So I'll take my piece of wood and a tape measure and a pencil and I'll make some marks first. And I'm going to use those marks as a way of figuring out where I can put a line so I can use actually the miter box as a ruler here and follow my lines. If you have a square, you could also use that. It's probably not a bad idea if you have one, but this will definitely work. So I have a reference mark. And then I'm going to start to saw. So first you want to just make a channel so you can start cutting. And be careful about where your hands are when you do this. If you have clamps in your house that you can use, use them for sure. 
but you don't need them. You can definitely do it by hand if you do not have clamps. It's just a bit more work. So once that first cut is done, I've got our piece here that's at two and a quarter by, I think it's probably a little about, about five, I think I measured it. Um, then the pieces are small enough that they can fit in the miter gauge and then it's a little easier. Now, the other thing that you're gonna notice when you start using the miter box or the saw in general is that the back of your cuts are gonna get rough from using a handsaw. So this is gonna be something that's gonna add a little bit of challenge when you're fitting your pieces because you know, you're gonna to have to worry about that edge. You're gonna to need to sand. So we'll be talking about sandpaper a little later. So the next thing that I do is I put the rest of my cut marks on the wood. So these are for the sides. So now we've got one, two, and three, and four pieces that are measured out to the two and a quarter by two and a quarter. And now I'm gonna stick these in the miter box and start cutting. So I'm gonna start with that cut because then this piece will be small enough that I could just turn it in any angle to do all the subsequent cuts right here. So that seems to make the most sense. So again, with the miter box, be careful of when you're using it about where your hands are. You have to hold the wood, but keep your fingers out of the way. our first cut and then I can just start taking these pieces and rotating them and doing the subsequent cuts and what's nice about doing them in the miter box is that they're gonna help keep your pieces nice and square so some basic pointers on using a miter box is number one you want to just let the weight of the saw cut you need to hold the wood that's in the miter box tightly. You kind of also need to hold the miter box itself to keep it from shifting around too much pretty tightly. But the saw itself is weighted and it will do a lot on its own. So as long as you have a really good grip on the wood and the miter box itself, if you just let the blade go back and forth without pressing down too much, and just take your time and don't let the saw get away from you and you should not have too much trouble. If you find that while you're cutting, the wood is sticking, what's probably happening is that the wood is moving side to side. So loosen up your grip a little bit and move the saw back and forth a tiny bit. And once you feel more freedom of movement on the saw, then grip again and keep cutting. So there's another cut. Then I can go ahead and take that piece and move it over and get ready to do it again. And I'm making sure that I'm lining up with my marks while I do the cut. I'm gonna hold tight and let the saw cut because if you put too much force on the saw you're definitely going to make it you're going to shake everything around yourself and it's going to be much harder to cut there's another cut so there we've got four sides and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut the bottom, which the bottom is a little bit bigger. So when you're done with the miter box, you're gonna end up with five pieces. One piece is gonna be oversized a little bit. And as we said, we did 
four pieces that are four and a quarter, I'm sorry, two and a quarter by two and a quarter, and one piece that's two and a half by two and a half. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do what's called the dry fit. The dry fit is the process of putting the pieces together and finding the best way that they wanna fit. And your goal is to first try to see if there is an optimal way where they all fit together and it just works better, there's fewer gaps. And from there, you will also likely need to do some sanding to get the pieces to fit together. So you're gonna to wanna to get your sandpaper at this point. Um, another handy thing to have might be if you have some other scraps of wood uh, from the pack that we mailed you guys that are rectangular, having a re uh, rectangular piece of scrap wood is pretty helpful. It'll uh, just make it easier to stick this inside of corners while you're working with the pieces. And also you can wrap sandpaper around that and uh, use it as a sanding block so that when you're sanding, you're getting a flat edge. If you just sand holding the sandpaper in your hand, you're not gonna end up with a flat edge. You're gonna get a rounded edge. You could also just lay the sandpaper on top of a flat surface if you can keep it from bunching up while you're using it. Like maybe tape it down or something. So I'm sitting here with these pieces and I'm just sanding some edges to make them flatter. Just some coarse sandpaper, like 40 grit, 80 grit, something like that. And I'm also deciding which veneer I want facing which way because plywood has an A side and a C side. The A side is the nicer side. It has a smoother, more continuous finish. And the seaside has a rougher finish and it often has voids and things. It doesn't look as good knots. So I can play around with that and decide, do I want the A side out or the seaside out? And then I'm going to take my pieces and I'm going to start playing with the orientation and see if I have a preferred way that they all seem to want to fit together better. And if I'm lucky, everything might balance. I could also get some tape if I need a little extra hand to keep things together. And you may want to try a couple of configurations until you're happy. So let's see, that almost settled. That's it, OK. there. Okay, so in this configuration, I'm going to end up with that. So that's roughly what I ended up with. There's a gap in that one corner that I'm not crazy about. So I'm going to pull that piece out. And I'm going to sand it a little more. And what happens is that when you're cutting with a miter gauge or with a handsaw, it's going to be a little trickier to get a true 90 degree cut. It's going to want to move off that line. So the blade is going to kind of wander as you're cutting. So sometimes you need to sand a little bit to just smooth it out and get it back to 90. So... That went pretty well. So I think we might be good to go. Let's just do one last dry fit and see if everything fits better. And I would, if I'm like getting ready to lock this down, I might say, all right, I'm gonna go grab a roll of tape. Okay. I might go grab a roll of tape because I'm pretty happy with this. So.
So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna nail this all together. We're gonna glue it and we're gonna nail it. So the glue is gonna be the real bond. We're gonna also use the nails. Now there's some tricky things about doing this because this is thin plywood. These are small pieces. There's really nothing holding them together. So what we kind of want to do is break this into steps. So my first goal is going to get these two pieces together. And then I may go ahead and do the two diagonal opposite ones and put those two together. And then take those two finished sort of squares or, you know, L shapes, you know, half squares and put them together. It might just be easier. And then after I have all four of the walls together, then I will attach the base. And what I'll probably do at that point is I'll flip it over, I'll put the base on top, and I'll nail it from the top. All right, so we have a roll of tape, which is just gonna help kind of hold things together a little bit. Um, you could also label your pieces if you're worried about getting them confused. Um, label them and keep them in an orientation, like do like letters, like something that has an orientation. Um, so it's easier to tell that you've got them all in the same orientation, in the same configuration the whole time. So I'm also going to use this scrap block of wood to help hold things together. And I'm trying to kind of get a sense of which way this is going to need to go for me to be able to hammer these together with the nails. Um, now, you don't necessarily have to use nails. You could use glue and tape or glue tape and then you need something you need to put a little bit more pressure on everything than you're going to get from just tape so you could preliminarily tape it but then you're going to want to like take some good thread or cord or something and bind it around um and then to hammer it you're going to need to put it you're going to need to support it so I'm gonna go through our little scrap bag here and I'm gonna make a little base out of stuff that I can put this against and hammer it. Maybe something like that might work. And we'll get our tape. We'll use that as well. You gotta find kind of like the right combination of stuff to prop it up on. Okay, that's pretty good. Actually, I might skip the tape. I feel like I feel like this is somewhere I can hammer it. So I'm gonna go for my nails and I'm gonna get the smallest nails that are in here because this is thin plywood and I don't want to Split it through the edges, it's really easy to do. And probably just two nails per side will be plenty. So this is why you need a good base underneath it to hammer into. And you gotta make sure that the nail is driving pretty straight. So this is a delicate process. Okay, so there's one. And I'm gonna do a second one. If you have like a concentration face, do not be ashamed to deploy it at this point in time because it is definitely useful. If you use any sound effects while you construct things, now is the time. This is also salty language time, I suppose. Who am I kidding? This is definitely salty language time. So the trickiest part is getting the nail to stay vertical and lined upright long enough to hammer it in. Once 
once it starts to line up. It goes pretty well. And the idea is that you need it to line up through the edge into the next piece. So you gotta be extra diligent about it. So as I'm going, I'm gonna test it against my other pieces and make sure that everything is going where I want it to and still fitting together correctly. And I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that process for the next two walls. Okay, so carefully keeping track again of which piece faces which way. Undo my glue up. And with glue, less is more. If you use too much glue, it ends up kind of pouring out of everything and it gets to be a huge mess and really hard to clean up and deal with while you're working. And I'm gonna take my little stack of scrap that I'm using as a support while I hammer these two things together. And I do it so that I'm hammering the nails down this way. It's just easier. I mean, really, I feel like it's, it might be the only way. I don't think you can really hammer this way. And just be extra careful that everything's lining up. Place your nail and get it to dig in a little bit and then you're probably going to have to hold it. Tap it once or twice just to get it to stay put and to make sure that it's pointing straight through the side piece. Because what things can go wrong are going to be that as you're driving the nail it comes out of one of the side walls. Once you get it started, it usually behaves, but getting it there can be tricky. And if you force the nail too much, you can end up causing it to break or break the wood. Okay, that went, nope, that came out of the side. So when that happens, you basically have to push it back out of the hole and then Throw the nail out because it usually means the nail is going to have bent and you're probably going to need a new hole as well. I wouldn't reuse the same hole. I may have just started a little too close to the edge. All right, that was much better. Okay, and one more on this side. That nail bent, so I'm going to pull it using my claw tooth on my hammer, and I'm going to replace it. I'm going to try to see if I can use the same hole again. I might. It seemed like it was actually driving pretty straight for a while, so it might work, maybe. 
Okay, so there's those two. And now we've got to join these up. So you have a little wiggle room. You can kind of bend things to get them to cooperate if they're not. Okay, so once you have these two halves, then it's a lot easier to handle the two of them. The one caveat is that you wanna do your glue for both at the same time for both of these edges when you connect them because you're not gonna be able to open this back up to get glue in the fourth corner at the end. So, and just keep track of where the pieces are gonna overlap so that you're gluing in the right spots. There and then in here. Okay, so now it's more or less a self-supporting structure. Something you want to start looking out for at this point is that all of the sides are parallel and that they're going to be not making any gaps with the bottom. So I usually keep the back or keep the bottom handy at this point once I get here. And for now, I'm just going to continue nailing um, as I was before. And you'll notice that I'm kind of having a discussion with these nails and coaxing them to drive where they need to drive because they're very soft. They're, they're what's called wire nails. They're literally made of wire. Um, so they're going to want to go all over the place. It's this balancing act of hitting them hard enough that they'll drive, but not hitting them so hard that they bend immediately. It's not super easy. and the last corner. This last set doesn't quite want to line up, so I'm going to try to kind of like force them to line up properly by holding really tight in the corner with my hands while I'm nailing in the hopes that I can get them to line up better. It's wood, so it's soft enough that it'll more or less do that. So there's that. And then I can go ahead and start attaching them to the base. So now I'm gonna go ahead and glue across the bottom. And I'm gonna take my base Put it here and start nailing. Okay, so here's the pieces connected. Just four nails on the bottom and two on each of the sides. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start spending some time sanding down the high spots. Cause like for example, that lip there on the bottom sticking out a good bit. 
I can sand that off. It's going to take some time, which is probably going to be the longest part of this process, but it is doable. It's time to binge watch some TV show. So if anybody knows what a palm sander is and you have one at home, now's a good time. Um, but it's doable. I mean, in all honesty, it's not going to take that long. But you probably couldn't get to a bunch of episodes or something. But you might want to have some, some entertainment while you do this. Okay, so after about, call it 35 minutes of sanding, I got all the edges down and I got a pretty good finish now. I chose to put the C side facing out. So the nice side is actually the inside of the box and the glue is still drying in there. So it'll dry a little bit lighter. You won't see it as much, um, but you could, while it's still wet or easy to get at, grab your X-Acto blade and get in there and take out any excess glue if you want it to look even nicer. Um, so there is your two and a half by two and a half by two and a half inch box using only a miter box, a hammer, and some nails, and some sandpaper and some glue.